Good morning guys, today we're going to continue with 10.2 arithmetic sequences and series. Now we left off at example 4, arithmetic means. Now normally when you think of the word mean, you think average. You know, you add all the numbers, divide, boom, get your average, your mean. But as far as sequences go, that's not what's actually happening. The mean are all the sequence numbers or terms between two set values, a minimum and a maximum. So for example, in this sequence, if I tell you find the arithmetic means, that means find the numbers that are missing between these two bounds, 4.3 and 12.8. And it's actually quite simple. All you actually have to do is use the basic formula you know, so nothing new, plug in all the values except the difference, because I don't know what the difference is for each term between these two numbers. Now, sometimes if there are few numbers, you can easily just tell by, you know, just thinking how many terms do I have and what's the difference between the first and the last term, but sometimes it's not that simple. So just use this formula. Let's go over this particular example. I know that my first term is 4.3, so I'm going to plug that in there. I know that this sequence has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. I do not know my difference, and I do know that my sixth term is 12.8. Pretty much that's the format you use to find the difference for the means. You know your first element, you know your last element. I know that my last element is the nth term, in this case, sixth term. You plug, it, you plug that in and then you find your D. Don't worry, I'm not dying, unfortunately. Uh, just the hiccups. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and just work everything. Six minus one is five. Now you isolate your D. You subtract 4.3 from 12.8, which gives you 8.5. And then you divide, and that's gonna give you your difference. Now, in the book it says that the difference is 1.7. Now that I know the difference of each term, you can just add 4.3 plus 1.7 is 6. 6 plus 1.7 is 7.7. 9 9.2. 10.9. That, 9.4. One second. Yeah, 9.4. Oh my God, this quarantine is just driving me nuts. 9.4, I can't add anymore. Um, then it'd be 10, 11.1. Yeah, 11.1. And then when I add 1.7 to that, you can see I end up with the correct 12.8. So again, you can just plug in the numbers and confirm. Now when they ask you find the arithmetic means, the answer will be all the numbers that are missing pretty much. And that's it. So again, that's a new definition. Arithmetic means the numbers between two bounds. You find the difference, then add from the first one on. You continue. Now, let's go over a new definition. And let me write down a couple of numbers. 12, 20, 30, 42, 56, okay. Now, today, or well, right now, we're gonna go over what second differences are. Now remember, first difference is what we obtain when we subtract a succeeding number from its preceding term, or a succeeding term from a a succeeding term. So in this case, 
it would be 20 minus 12. The difference between these two is 8. Now, the second term, the second and third term, when I do the difference, even though it's the second one, that's still called the first difference. In this case, and why is this important? You'll see why right now. Now, when the first difference are identical, let's give you guys another example. Two, difference of two, difference of two, difference of two. When the differences are constant, it's an arithmetic sequence. In this case, the differences are not constant. So it's not an arithmetic sequence. But we can use these first difference to determine something else. Now we're going to take what's called the second difference, which means doing the difference of the first difference. So in this case, 10 minus 8 is 2, 12 minus 10 is 2, 14 minus 12 is 2, and so on and so forth. Now, why is this important? If your first difference aren't constant, then you work on the second difference. If the second difference is constant, that means that that's a quadratic sequence. Now, don't freak out. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, like a, 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 a to see the exact term. Um, don't call it a quadratic sequence. Just say that the sequence can be, can be expressed via a quadratic equation. Okay. And you'll say, Prophet, what's a quadratic equation? You should remember a quadratic equation has the form x squared plus uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a quadratic equation. Now let's go over example two. Example two pretty much says, uh, pardon, not example two, example five. They're giving me the following numbers. Again, the exact same numbers, but let's repeat them. 12, 20, 30, 42, 56, 72. Bah, 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 bah. Now, I just did this. I calculated the second difference, and I was told that, yeah, you know, it was actually a quadratic um, equation. You know, the second differences were the same. Now, in order to convert the ax squared plus bx plus c equation, to work with sequences and series, we do the following. Instead of x, you just change it for n. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's the only difference. Instead of x's, we use the nth term. And how do we work this? For example, I know that my first term is a 12. So I know that 12 is going to equal a, the first term squared, plus b times 1, because it's the first term, plus c. No number goes there. I know that my second term is 20, and that's equal to a times the second term, plus b times the second term plus C. I know that my third term is 30. And that is equal to A times the third term plus B times the third term plus C. Now all we have to do is, let me go ahead and erase this already. We're gonna convert this into a matrix. Yay, matrices again. So we're going to have 12 equals A. Remember, the square does not apply to the A. We do PEMDAS 1. Squared is 1 times A is A plus B plus C. 20 equals 4A plus 2B plus C. 30 equals 9A 
plus 3b plus c. Now that you have your very nice little matrix, or you know, linear equation system, you're gonna go ahead and solve it for a, b, and c. You can use Gaussian Jordan elimination, you can use Kramer's, you can use substitution elimination, however you want. You're gonna solve it for a, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna find your a, your b, and your c, and what you do is, once you have those values, which in this case, a equals one, b equals five, and c equals six, all you have to do is go back to this quadratic equation and substitute the values. One times n squared is n squared plus b n plus c. Now let's see if we're correct. The first term is 12. One squared is one plus five times one is five plus six. Oh my God, that gives me 12. I forgot a one there. That gives me 12, correct. Let's try the second term, which is 20. Again, I'm just confirming. You don't have to confirm, but it's always nice. Second term, two squared is four times one. Let, let me just rewrite the formula. n squared plus five n plus six. The second term is four plus 10 plus six. Oh my God, it's working. Magic. Um, 20. So again, all you have to do is Set, create a linear equation system. Use three, don't use two, use three. Solve the matrices however you want. You know, we just spent about three weeks solving matrices. Solve it, find your A, B, and C. Plug it into, you know, plug your A, B, and C into the quadratic equation. And that's the formula that expresses uh, the, the, the sequence in a quadratic fashion. Um, that's going to be pretty much it for today. Uh, for homework, please do 27 and 28, which is arithmetic means, and also do 33 and 34, which is quadratics. Okay. Uh, now, we got about three weeks left. What we're going to do is... I'm going to finish probably sequences in series tomorrow, very likely. We're going to end this week giving an intro to limits and derivatives, which is important. We're going to give one exam this Friday, which is going to be the, the sequences in series exam and the vector exam. It's probably going to be this Friday or Thursday, you know, whenever. Next week, I'm going to give the limits and derivative test. But know that you're going to start working on a project next week to finish the school year. Now, the project, uh, pretty much I'm going to tell you what it is right now, even though I'm going to give you the specifics of the grading. So you can start formulating an idea and working. Now, the groups, first of all, the projects are going to be groups of one or two people. Profe, can I do a group of three? No, if you ask me if you can do a group of three, I will give you a zero. That means you haven't seen the video. You cannot do a group of three, no matter the reason, no matter, no, no importa. Profe, I broke both of my arms. Find somebody else. Profe, the person I actually teamed up with also broke both of their arms. Type with your feet. No groups of three. One or two people. Soy claro, no quiero que nadie me pregunte. Profe, puede hacer grupo de tres. The answer right now is no. One or two people groups. Punto. Now, the project is going to be... Uh, I, the 10th graders love the idea. And I think, you know, it's a pretty cool project. Because, again, you can do pretty much whatever you want. The whole project is looking at this year of math and finding a particular subject. I know it might be a little difficult. I mean, polar graphs. What? Uh, so again, it's going to be maybe a little difficult, but I'll review the things you've seen this year. 
and say how that particular subject is applied in the career that you're interested in. That's the project. Um, explain how it's used, why it's used, for what purpose. Um, and I'll give you more specifics for the project later on, but pretty much that's the basic idea. Now, if you don't have a career of choice, let me know and we'll talk. Maybe you can use a hobby or we can just find a particular career. Um, if you can't find absolutely anything this year that is applied in your career for some reason, but again, we did see a whole bunch of things, especially, you know, basic things in the first month, set theory, linear equations, you know, so, so again, it's gonna be difficult to not find something, but if you can't find anything, you can let me know and I will help you. Uh, the end product will be a video, which you're gonna have to link on a post I will do in Teams. And this will also allow Miss Gibson, Leslie, and Miss Padilla to see the videos. They will not be uploaded to YouTube without your permission or something. So they're not gonna be public. They're not gonna be public without your permission. So don't worry, you you know, you will be protected. Uh, pero Miss Gibson, Joseina, Miss Padilla, and Leslie have access to our team forum and that's where the videos will be posted because I do want them to see your videos. You guys do excellent videos. Um, that makes you look good and that makes me look good. So let's all look good and we need it because right now, sin pela, uno está feísimo, pero ni modo. Um, so we're going to finish the school year with a fun project. You're going to get to know a little bit about your career. You're going to be able to see how math is applied in the career of your choice. You will be able to choose what subject you've seen that is applied in your career. And it's going to be, I think, an, a, a, an easy and relaxed and fun way to finish the school year. Very stress-free. You don't have to turn in a document. It's just a cool, fun video. It doesn't have to be very long. Maybe two, three minutes. Um, again, you can make it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. That's fine. We can discuss. You can have fun during the video. You can dress up. Um, you know, as the professional of your choice. So if you're a doctor, you can dress up as a doctor. If you're a, a, someone in finance or business, you can dress as a businessman and, you know, do like a little mock-up. We can have fun. Um, otherwise, that's today's class. If you have any questions for today, let me know. Um, we will be finishing sequences and series tomorrow. Actually, here's what we're going to do. We're going to finish sequences and series tomorrow. I'll give you review Wednesday, exam Thursday. So we can forget this subject. Then I'm going to give you two or three days of limits next week. Exam on Wednesday. I'm going to post the project on Thursday. And then we're going to work on the project till you guys leave. And that's pretty much the end of the school year. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise... Have a great day and I'll see the homework today before 11 or 12, whenever. Just send it today. Take care, guys.